Hey guys, in the past I talked about the Cessna 182 and the basics. I'll see the cross country flight, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what's under the hood and some of the maintenance that an owner can do. Remember, these are air cooled, and then oil is super important to actually help lubricate and cool it as well. So I'm going to change the oil today and show you how I do it. We'll take off the cowling here, both the top part and the bottom part. This is something an owner can do, and I think it's really cool to see an engine beneath the cowling. Okay, so right now I'm just taking off a couple of screws or bolts actually that fit right here on the nose cone. And then there'll be these um, quick releases here that I'll take off as well, just to get the top cowling off. Okay, so now I'm just getting these quick releases on the top part of the cowling. Okay, and then I'll just come on around to the other side. And continue to take these off. All right, guys, we got the cover off, the top cowling. Wanted to show you we have the cylinders here, three on this side, three on the other, so six cylinders total. They're horizontally opposed. All right, so the pistons go within this, go back and forth. We also have for the uh, ignition system, two magnetos, two spark plugs, so that is a safety mechanism that makes it fire a little bit more efficiently. We got a spark plug on the top of the cylinder, another one on the bottom. Other things are the oil the filler cap right here where I'm going to take the oil out in just a sec. Um, and we have an oil cooler right in here in the front of the airplane. And that air comes through the, the, be the front of this airplane and through the fins here and uh, out through, uh, we have some cow flaps and other ways for the air to get out. And that's basically what cools the airplane. Yeah, all right guys, so I'm down here at the bottom of the bottom cowling and there's some of these quick releases as well. There's one right in here. Uh, and also, this is the cow flaps that allow it to cool for these larger engines. And there's a couple bolts I'll have to take off here. And another couple screws that are up over here, up in the engine itself. And that's uh, what they call the air box. So it's basically the air that comes into the carburetor. This is a carbureted engine. All right, so we got the bottom cowling off. And um, we're going to deal with just the oil system. But just while I'm here, I'm also going to have to deal with the fuel system here. This is a... Uh, when you have fuel that gets water in it, you want to drain by the wings, but also at the very bottom of the fuel system, sometimes they call it a gasculator or a fuel strainer, but there's a little knob inside the uh, engine cabinet, cap, cabinet, I guess it is, and I pull that to let fuel come out of this, and if there's any water at the bottom of this, then that also comes out. And so this is a really important feature, which I'm gonna work on maybe in another video if we're lucky, I can videotape that. This is the carb box down here. This is the carburetor. It's actually like upside down compared to like a car. Now let me just show you the oil filter. Right in here is the oil filter. And I'm going to have to take that off as well. So that is the oil filter right there. It's kind of buried in there. It also has some safety wire. All right, so you see the uh, safety wire. This is fresh safety wire, and then this is the old safety wire. Again, so that oil filter, I'm going to screw it on, and of course it can unscrew with vibration. So once I get it torqued to its tightness, it's very similar to a car, by the way, uh, but then we put the safety wire on so that it cannot unscrew in air and I lose my oil. All right, just some um, tools real quick, just for fun. We got some wire cutters. Uh, we're also going to have to uh, take off the oil filter. We'll use the socket set. Um, this to take off the safety wire. And we torque on the new one, we have a preset torque wrench for the exact torquing. Again, this is not a do-it-yourself video. I just wanted to show you kind of the steps I do. Uh, maybe some folks will get some value out of that. All right, so that's blue. Blue quick release thing is actually the bottom of the oil pan. And uh, when you push it, you start to actually get oil coming out. And you can turn it to lock it. And uh, there's about, you know, 10 quarts are in it probably that are starting to come out. So you can see the oil that's coming out of the engine here. It's a different kind of oil than you'd have, let's say, in a pickup truck or your car. Um, it's thicker for starters. And when it starts to get brown like this, it's time to replace it. I'm also going to do a little fuel sample here. Actually, oil sample, I meant to say. And that, I'm going to send that to a lab and they'll actually test to see if there's any metal particles in it. 
and other kinds of uh, deterioration of the engine. The engines can go a couple thousand hours to be overhauled. Um, this one has about 750 hours on it, so it's in pretty good shape. All right, so we put the filter on. I safety wired it. Uh, you can do that as an owner. Just make sure you get it nice and tight and, and take a look at other videos on how to do that correctly. And then I'm just using this kind of oil right here. It's a Philip 66 XC. The viscosity is 20W50. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's a different kind of oil. Ashless dispersant or something like that. I hate to somehow tell you something wrong here. But um, it's definitely different. It just says aviation, aviation motor oil here. Um, and then it's very thick, like I said. So here's all I do. I put in 12 quarts. And it, it can handle 12, but quite frankly, usually you put like 11 and then check it. And that does it.